Am I still even vegan, y'all? This is a word. This is a word. This is a word. Y'all, it's been a minute since I've had a chance to um, catch up with you and like give you an update. I mean, I just, I did a, I did, you know, a hey, I'm like still alive uh, check in a little while ago. Y'all have to excuse me because I'm uh, backing out of my driveway. So, um, so, yeah, so I just did a, you know, I wanted to like do a little bit more than just, hey, I'm still alive. And like, really, there have been some changes, y'all. There have been some pretty big changes um, that have been happening with me since the last time I was able to check in with you. I hope you got, I hope you all are going to be able to see me. Um, so right now I'm actually going to, um, going to the laundromat right now. But, um, so I, you know, produced a conference and that may have seemed like a really small deal for anyone who's not ever produced a conference before, but I can tell you that it was a huge, it was a huge undertaking. And, um, I'm not going to say if I hadn't known... I'm not gonna say that if I had known what I was signing up for when I did it, that I would have said no, because honestly, the experience was amazing. It was a lot of work, but the experience was absolutely amazing um, to basically um, facilitate a discussion amongst, you know, 300 people for six days in total. We didn't have all 300 people there for the entire six days, but we had about 40 people for the first three days and then um, part, part, part of the way through that uh, the third day, the first group did a presentation of plays that were developed with Julian Bowal. Um, and just a little context, Julian Bowal um, I'm a theater of the oppressed practitioner, and I'm sure that I've said that many, many times, and a lot of you are probably like, what the heck is theater of the oppressed? Um, theater of the oppressed is a particular, you know, it's a, it's a theater technique, right? It's a theater technique that was developed specifically to be a form of popular education. So it's a way to teach people about issues and then to help folks suss out ways to address those issues in their own lives, right? Um, so it's very specific, it's very concrete, it looks at how things operate, happen in the real world, it's very, very, I really, really enjoy it. Um, and it gets folks out of that theory space and into the like real concrete world space, which um, I think people, I think a lot of folks on both the left and the right see as an issue when you're trying to talk to people about what's going on in the world. Um, some people get so caught up in the concepts that they they don't actually talk about like practically what is happening and how practically to address those issues. And sometimes we get so caught up in like terms and terminology that we lose sight of the fact that at the end of all of this are real people who are being affected by those things and would like to have those address those issues addressed in their lives and whether or not um, one thinks that it is practical to address the issues of every single person if you're that individual you want your shit addressed so so um theater of the oppressed is a way to look at the way um issues concretely affect individuals in their lives and how to, you know, practically address those issues um, in, a, in the context of, uh, usually in the context of an entire community. So like you'll bring together a community to um, be in a room together and discuss these issues and they look at these plays that were developed that simply frame the issue for them. So that was cool. So that said, um, it was developed by uh, an individual named Augusto Boal, who was in Brazil at a pretty scary time when there was a lot of political repression going on, um, people were being kind of rounded up and tortured, as a matter of fact, and Augusto Boal was one of those individuals. And the theater was one of the few places where you were safe to talk about stuff. 
Um, and then it actually, um, the repression got so high that not even the theater was a safe place for that. But for a while, um, uh, Augusto Bual was addressing political is issues in Brazil until he finally was actually exiled. And then he was brought back later on and even became a politician, which is a really interesting story. Anyway, um, I collaborate with Julian Bual, who is his son, um, who used to be a practitioner with his father, but um, uh, Julian was a practitioner with Augusto, uh, for many, many years, and then after Augusto passed away, Julian took up the torch and is now, you know, the, you know, one of the main practitioners of theater of the oppressed, and he teaches, and that's, it's a wonderful thing. He also still lives in Brazil, where if uh, everyone has been following, they're going through their own uh, kind of uh, resurgence of of fascism, or at least, you know, basically they have a dictator right now in Brazil, if you've not been following the politics. So, uh, you guys, I have been immersed in conversations with people talking about the, our current political space, like where our, our current political moment, and I have a lot of things that I want to talk to you all about. I want to share a lot of what I've been learning with you, and so I'm, I'm thinking that over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be looking specifically at politics and not necessarily the terms, but I'm gonna be looking at like fascism and I'm gonna be looking at like the idea of dictatorships and I'm gonna be looking at like the places in the world where we see a resurgence of these things and trying to talk to you about them as they've been manifesting themselves in the world and also as they may potentially be manifesting themselves where I live in the United States. So I hope that that's something that will be interesting for all of you. Um, I'm going to try to get uh, David Cobbs back on the horn and have a conversation with him. Um, we might be getting him back on the live stream either this Sunday or next Sunday. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm certainly going to be trying to get David Cobbs on a conversation with some students that I have staying with me at the house. Um, I also did uh, a tour of Detroit with a wonderful organizer named Richard Feldman who is on the board at the Bog Center and has been doing this tour for years and years and years. And it was just wonderful to have him framing what's happening in Detroit and then to be able to talk about that in the larger context is something that I think is really important. So that's something that I'm gonna be breaking down like some of the particular issues that are happening in Detroit and then talking about those on a more, like uh, trying to um, set those within a global context for you. So that's a lot that I'm trying to take on for the next week. While I have these 12 um, individuals from Purchase, uh, 11 of them students, one is a graduate student, and then one of them is a professor. So. Yeah, all of that's happening. And then I'm going to talk to you about some, I'm also going to be talking to you about some things that I want to be doing in alt space. And I know um, Madison McKnight asked specifically, um, you know, what is alt space? And so I'm going to be talking a little bit more about what is alt space or like how it's operating right now, but also how I see this project developing into the future. So that's it for this video. Like it if you like it, share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself.